This isn't just another 30-minute commercial. This is the people behind the products, the innovators, the engineers, the entrepreneurs. Set thief, Mr. Russell. This is Dear Tech TV. Welcome to Dear Tech TV. With the new Browning Firearms X Bolt, there's only a beautiful Cerakote finish. No sugar coating necessary. What you see is what you get. Browning is one of the oldest and most trusted quality rifle makers in the world. And you know what's changed about that over the years? Absolutely nothing. Today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the, the firearm we got to use last fall. And it was the Browning Firearms and it was the Hell's Canyon Speed Edition. It is an awesome, awesome rifle. When you guys are looking for a caliber for whitetails, you got to really think about where you're using it. So one, think about where you're hunting. If, if you're in a canopy of woods, you know, I, I kind of like a bigger bullet just in case you hit any kind of brush, you have a little bit more power. It, you know, if you're shooting out in distances, you want something with a lighter bullet that shoots really flat so you don't have to worry about that drop, less wind drag. If you're carrying the firearm a long ways, you know, if you put a wood stock on this, it's pretty, right? A lot of people love the look of wood, but it's going to be heavier. So I, I like the synthetic stocks. Plus, I beat the snot out of my rifle, so I don't have to worry about it scratching. This one, I don't have to worry about it rusting. You know, that's another consideration. How much care are you going to put in your gun? I would never buy a wood stock gun for my kids because they just beat it up. I mean, they'll, they'll, <laughs> they don't appreciate what the value of a good rifle, and that's a lot of other hunters are in the same boat. Uh, a few things that I really liked about it. One is it's super lightweight. Two, it looks cool. It has that cool factor. It has what they call a burnt bronze finish, which I've never seen before. They actually carried that color all the way into the stock. But it's got a fluted barrel, so it's extremely lightweight. It's got a muzzle brake on it, which is great if you're dealing with kids with recoil or even as adults with recoil, let's face it, who likes it? So out of the box, this thing was extremely accurate. I mounted the scope myself. If you're familiar with the X-Bolt, normal, a normal rifle has the bases are literally just two screws. This one has four, so it uses the X technology. And what that does is it makes it extremely stable and it's easy to mount your scope. So I mounted the scope literally out of the box. It took me probably five shots, at a, uh, set it in at 25 yards. Within five shots at 100 yards, I had a dime-sized group. We literally took this gun on a hunt four days later after that fun axis, shot a couple of beautiful axis bucks. The other thing this gun has, and I didn't realize until looking up on it, is the, the, the butt plate is extremely slick so it doesn't get caught on your, your uh, clothing when you're pulling it up or sliding it down. But inside of there is what they call like an infused technology. And what it does is when you pull the trigger, it actually pushes the gun a little bit away from your cheek so you don't feel, even if it would recoil, you don't feel it. Two features that I really want to point out on this rifle because a lot of bolt actions to really be able to unload the firearm, it has to be off safe. This one doesn't. It literally comes with, you can have it on safe, it's got a button above the bolt, and all you gotta do is push it on, and you do it. The other thing why I'm gonna mention it, it's a short action, so literally the, the bolt comes up, it's only like a 60 degree angle, so you don't have as much play. And what that does for you is, it allows you to chamber around much, much quicker. If you don't believe it, once you go back to a long bolt versus a short bolt, there's a huge, huge difference. Coming up next on Deer Tech TV, Brad talks carbon alloy technology. 
and shows off Scentlock's latest late-season gear. And then, Brad and cameraman David take the X-Bolt to Texas and point their sights on their first-ever Axis deer. Stay tuned. Deer Tech TV is brought to you by Scent Thief. Steal the hunt. Record Rack. Serious nutrition. Browning Trail Cameras. The best there is. Maverick Blinds. A lifetime of hunting. Tinks. America's number one buckler. And by Sportsman's Guide Buyers Club. Outfit your passion and save at www.sportsmansguide.com. For over 25 years, QAD has set the bar in aero rest technology. Made in the USA and built with a lifetime warranty, the Ultra Rest gives you flawless operation guaranteed every time. When you pair the Ultra Rest with QAD's Exodus broadheads that feature top of the market penetration and consistency, then you'll be crushing bones, not blades. Defeating a whitetail's nose is arguably the number one task of any whitetail hunter. With over 300 million scent receptors in a whitetail's nose, it's a task that seems absolutely impossible to achieve. But with companies like Scentlock constantly driving innovation and finding ways to stay hidden from that big trophy buck, or even better, that cranky old doe that seems to always be hunting for a hunter to stomp her feet and blow at, you can rest assured that defeating the whitetail's nose while also staying comfortably warm, might I add, may not be as impossible as it seems. Today I want to talk a little bit about Scentlock's new garment, the Divergent, which is a cold weather gear. But before I get into that, I want to talk a little bit about carbon technology. Carbon technology has been here since the early 90s. I got in the industry in 93. And how carbon works is it absorbs scent. And they use it in today's a lot of different filters, a lot of different environments still use the carbon technology. And Scentlock's the only one that uses that technology in their clothing. It's called the carbon alloy, and that's the base that they use. Great for absorbing scent. I always tell people, carbon works, you know, it, does it take away every bit of scent that you have? No, it doesn't. But to a whitetail, they still might smell you, but it smells like you were there a week ago. So they literally might lift up their head. Some don't pay any attention. Some will lift, still continue through. So it's a great, great scent control technology. Now I want to get into the divergent piece itself. So as I mentioned, it's a cold weather piece. It used permaloft. And the insulation in it, they use gold. The standard in the industry is normally silver. So this, the gold is 15% heavier. They also use thermal mapping. And what does that mean? It means the, the arms and the legs and other pieces that your extremities that you need to move have less insulation on it. Your core, your butt, all those have more. So what's that gonna do? It's gonna keep you warmer during the cold weather on stand. It uses the Precipitation X technology on the outside. So it's rain resistant. But the beauty of this thing is, you guys can't feel this, this thing is super, super soft. I mean, there is gonna be no noise whatsoever. The other thing that I really like about it, I don't know if you can see this, it's a quarter zip down, it zips on both sides, so therefore you can pull it over. Why did they do that? Because you got an internal muff that goes all the way through. So you got your internal muff. It's not big, it's not baggy. It is the coolest system out there. The other thing they have, your gear pockets inside the coat. These, they also use technology so you can put your electronics in there and it's gonna keep your electronics a little bit warmer. They use the same technology in the ski patrol out west. So it is super, super cool. One thing about the Divergent suit is it has an internal face mask. And you might not think it's a big deal, but the face mask carbon, so it's gonna absorb scent. And a little fun fact right here, more scent is dissipated from your head than any other part of your body, your mouth, your hair. So by having that all carbon line, you're gonna eliminate all that scent, so therefore less scent is getting out there. The knees on the pants are articulated which means they got a slight bend to them. You really can't tell when it's in this, but what that does is when you're sitting down in a tree stand, it's gonna allow free movement. You got a little bit more room in there. Other than that, it comes with the exact same great features. One more feature that the clothing has is wind stopper, it's windproof. 
And if you ever have a garment that doesn't have that protection in it, you're gonna get cold a lot sooner. That membrane that stops the wind is crucial. This thing is a great garment. Check it out, scentlock.com. Don't go away. Brad makes his Lone Star State debut while putting the Browning X-Bolt to the test. You're watching Deer Tech TV. Earlier, we took a look at the new Hell's Canyon from Browning, and now you're going to get to see it in action. Well, we're in Sonora, Texas, hunting with Trophy Whitetails, Inc. Keith and Steve Miller run the place. It's actually Steve that's in camp. David and I drove, the cameraman drove all night to get there. So you take a Wisconsin boy and you put him in Texas. You know, you don't really know what to expect because you hear about the high fence or low fence, free ranging, and, and you get in a blind and it's a pretty dang cool experience because you just don't know what's going to show up. It, is it going to be a fallow deer? Is it going to be an axis? And whitetails were like ants. Uh, I was amazed at how these whitetails would just come. You know, we hunted over feeders, we hunted over water tanks, um, and, and literally like, if you're in the afternoon, you're sitting on water, the whitetails would run in to get to the water. And some really good bucks, I mean, probably 130, 140 inch deer that came right up next to the blind, which is pretty cool to see. So we're sitting in a spot and he said, there's a pretty good access deer, but, but where he really wanted to put us, the wind wasn't right. Well, okay, you put two Wisconsin boys in, in a blind in Texas, and, and I swear the axis looked like it was a giant to me. I mean, it looked like a really good buck. It's coming in, you know, we looked at him for quite a while. Um, the cameraman saw him first, he had a better angle. He told me it was right by the post. I'm looking by another post, I see nothing, but you know, absolutely nothing. And, and then all of a sudden I started seeing the does and he goes, oh, the buck's behind. So then I leaned over, sure enough, this, this really pretty axis deer comes in. First morning in Texas after a 20 hour drive. And literally, normally I'm one of those last minute type of guys. I always shoot the deer in the last couple days. And here we had the first buck come out and it's done. I already got my Daxus buck, he's laying out there. Dropped him right in his tracks. Beautiful, beautiful animal. Look at that thing. Isn't that beautiful? My first big game other than whitetails. Never shot anything other than whitetails. So he came in first life, gave us a great opportunity for a shot. Is this a pretty, pretty animal with all the spots? Yes. Doesn't get much better than this. We're hunting with Texas Trophy Whitetails. Keith and Steve Miller, they got exotics. They got tons of whitetails. We probably saw 40 whitetails since we shot this thing. And uh, I couldn't be more happy. Just beautiful. It's got nice fronts. Super, super cool. Deer Tech TV is brought to you by Browning Firearms, the best there is. 
Whitetail Institute, research equals results. Outdoor Edge's game processing sets to do it yourself and save. Elite Archery, the world's most shootable bow. Scentlock, proven deadly. And by Quiet Cat, the most capable hunting e-bike on the planet, where the road ends, the adventure begins. You're watching Deer Tech TV. This is on the ground. You know, we both had tags. David had a tag. Now it's my chance to be a cameraman and let him be the hunter. And uh, we hunted hard first, first that that first evening. We sat out. We <laughs> literally we heard the first roar, I guess, and didn't know what it was because they kind of make a whistle more than a roar. And we're sitting there hunting access, and I didn't even know that's what they actually sounded like. Kind of a funny story. But that night, uh, a storm kind of rolled in, which is rare in Texas anyway, especially the spot we were hunting. They hadn't had rain in such a long time, but the animals were a little bit spooky. Next morning, we sat in another blind, saw tons and tons of whitetails. None of the access deer, at least the trophy class animals, showed up. But the next night, Steve said he had a special spot for us, and we went to the new farm, and he had showed me like literally trail camera photos of this area from the year before. And I was like, David, we are going to the honey hole. And, and it did not disappoint. We weren't there more than probably 30 minutes, an hour maybe, and the whitetails started coming out. And uh, the first whitetail is a pretty good buck. And then I thought I saw another pretty good whitetail buck down in the bottom. And I was trying to tell David where it was when we were glassing it. And then he looked, he goes, you sure it's not an axis? I see spots. And I was like, no, it's not an axis. I, mean, I guarantee it was a whitetail. Well, we were looking at two different deer, but they were in the same. Pretty soon the deer pop out. And the buck I'd seen, he's coming right in with a couple does. Uh, um, and behind him, there was this axis deer. And, and, you know, I swing the camera over on him. And when I got him in focus, I was like, oh my God, this thing's huge. And Dave was like, I think he's a shooter. I was like, oh yeah, this thing's a shooter. And, and you know, me as a camera guy, that, that I get to hunt with my kids. So I, I get to talk them off that ledge when they get overly excited. And, and David, this is his first experience shooting axis deer as well. And, and I can hear him, his breathing starting to get intense. And I'm like, dude, it's gonna to come to the water hole. We're gonna shoot him as soon as he gets done drinking. He's gonna turn and come right where the whitetails. We're gonna shoot him right there. Ready? Yep. And you know, I, I'm not saying he didn't do a great job because he did. He took the shot. Boom! The axis is down. And we got to go up into a trophy of a lifetime. That thing was over 30, whatever, 35 inches, almost 36 inches. Just a giant, giant axis deer. I'm gonna get in trouble because I gotta mount that and my, my fiance is gonna hate me for it. I am humbled. I'm normally behind the camera. Brad Rux, my boss, he uh, let me take out an Axis buck this time around, and it's my first one, first, first actual harvest with a gun at all. Um, and yeah, he's beautiful. He's got this nice curvature. His, his top main beam, he was chipped off. It's been that way for a while, but oh, he's gonna, he's gonna look amazing on the wall. <laughs> Woo! It was great to have that experience running the camera. I think I did a pretty good job. I mean, I know he was in focus for most of it. 
I think you did too, Brad. And as for your first trip to Texas, I think it's safe to assume you're probably going back next year. And who can blame you, since Axis meat is one of the most delicious wild game meats out there. Well, that wraps up another episode of Deer Tech TV. Thanks for watching. That beat Mr. Russell.